Okay, for SKMM, they're taking um, engineering economy uh, and we embed engineering economy in uh, industrial engineering course as well as in engineering management, uh, safety and uh, accounting. So um, they also learn about the engineering economy. Nah. But for SEMI students, you have to learn uh, more deeper uh, compared to uh, SKMM students. Okay. So uh, I believe this is the first uh, first time um, uh, you made this subject. Okay. So this the nature of the subject is very different from other courses that uh, you um, gone through before. Okay. So why we need the um, engineering economy knowledge as an engineer? Why we need to understand the need for uh, engineering economy in the field of engineering? Why we need to know the basic of engineering economy? And why we have to determine yeah, um, the engineering economy in decision making. Any idea? Hello, any idea? Why we as an engineer, we have to learn about engineering economy? Uh, proper planning and budget. Proper planning, budget. What else? Financial statement. Financial statement is more to accounting. Engineering economy is something like um, you have, uh, if let's say you uh, have to conduct projects, okay, so you have to know, okay, the value of the project. So uh, whether, okay, for example, uh, previously uh, I mentioned about the HSRL project, isn't it? We have limited budget. Okay, sekejap eh. We have limited budget to work with. Okay. So, um, there also the constraint lah. So, if the company or organization have a limited budget, so you also have to um, evaluate whether it is worth to continue the project or we have to stop the project. So, that was happened for HSRL project okay so that's why uh, engineering economy is very very important in order for us as an industry engineer to make a decision to have uh, because when we are talking about industry engineer uh, we always talk about productivity so when we're talking about productivity we also have to uh, consider about about cost consider about money okay because we don't want to spend a lot of money and then end up the productivity of the company will be um, uh, apa? will be diminished or down. So that's why um, uh, as an industry engineer, uh, we have to know a little bit on the engineering economy in order to make a decision. So development in science and technology causes changes for improvement. Okay, uh, knowledge in the field of engineering is very important, for example, in designing a product or services. Uh, but decision making requires a systematic financial management. So we know that uh, for a company nowadays, they are, uh, always work with the uh, science and technology, uh, the development of the science or development of the new technology, the latest technology. And then from there, um, we have a lot of improvement projects because when you produce a new product or new technology or new things there are always there is a room for improvement so when they're talking about the improvement all of course we need budget okay so when we need budget then we have to know the uh, systematic uh, systematic approach in order to portray okay this uh, project is worth to continue or how much that we have to spend, how much of the company have to spend in order to um, make the project is successful. Okay. Tak boleh bus, bus, uh, bus budget lah. So engineering and economy are closely related 
and economic engineering involves systematic evaluation in financial management in solving engineering problems. Okay. Okay. Besides HSRL, any projects that um, you read from the newspaper or from the uh, internet uh, that you can relate with um, this kind of approach. HSRL. I already mentioned about HSRL. Okay, Pen Borneo. Okay, what about Pen Borneo? Shah Indrawan. Explain a bit. Shah Indrawan. Yes, doctor. Uh, uh, tell uh, tell your friends about Pen Borneo. Pen Borneo, dia apa? Diluluskan masa kerajaan BN. Uh, English, tu, English, English. We have international friends here. <laughs> the Pen Borneo project has been approved. Has been approved by the government before this. After that, the other government take the project has been shut up. It's been delay, mm -hmm. and other tender has been take. That is been uh, the cost of this project is increased. Mm. <laughs> That's all. So, uh, and up, uh, what happened to this Pen Borneo uh, project? This what is their decision? Continue, but the cost is increased. Mm. Okay. All right. Okay. Thank you, Shah. Okay. Next. The need for engineering economy. So uh, the decision to choose between alternatives depend on the monetary factors. And decision made is a balance between combination of technical and economic aspect. Okay. So we can categorize into three programs. Uh, where first program to increase profit. So for example, development of a new product increasing new production capacity and improving customer service center okay so this all project um, uh, can uh, can increase the profit of the company or organization okay so second cost control programs such as defect reduction programs because each defect is costly okay uh, efficiency improvement Waste reduction and liabilities reduction programs. Okay, this type of uh, programs, we have to uh, control the cost. Okay, therefore, we need the uh, engineering economy knowledge. And then the last one is facilities or infrastructure programs, such as construction of roads, bridge, playground. Okay, this is to develop the infrastructure. So these programs are not profit oriented, but rather focus on increasing convenience and comfort at minimum cost. Uh, doctor, uh, yes. kami sebenarnya tak nampak slide lah tu. Oh, uh, ya ke? Uh, slide tiba-tiba tak ada tadi. Tadi ada kan? Ha, tadi ada. Lepas tiba-tiba dia, dia, dia macam unshare pula. Uh, entire screen lah ni. Okay. Entire screen. Hello. Okay, ni nampak? Um, nampak lah tu. Okay. So slide slide ni tak nampak lah. Nah, tak apalah. Saya dah forward tadi kan. Alright. So uh, normally we have three programs. 
So when we have three programs, then uh, these types of programs, we need the uh, engineering economy knowledge. Okay. So the last one um, for facilities and infrastructure, normally if they, uh, before uh, during the pandemic, they stop all this uh, to increase the convenience and comfort because um, they don't think that is uh, the right right time lah, uh, to increase the convenience and comfort of the uh, customer or uh, client. Okay. Uh, but more on cost control programs, okay, more to efficiency improvement or waste reduction and then um, more to a program to increase profit. Okay. So it depends on the economics as well. All right. So now our economy is um, uh, is improving. Uh, we don't say uh, we recovered yet, but it's improving. Okay. So in your opinion, uh, during this stage, which type of programs is uh, useful uh, to continue? Cost control. Cost control. Cost control only. Program to increase profit. Mm -hmm. Because uh, if uh, you can see bank, okay. Right now, bank is chasing the... Uh, Apa kita panggil? <coughs> the customer uh, to make loan. Why? They have to invest some money to get more money. Okay. So that's why uh, right now for banker, um, whatever uh, the medium, uh, they will post and then promote uh, for the uh, for the loan. Okay. Because bank will get more profit if, let's say, they give loan to the uh, client, okay, to the customer. So that's why a program to increase profit, okay, that is the approach by bank. Uh, because during the pandemic, can, uh, uh, but, uh, the government uh, says, okay, uh, for loan, loan payment, higher purchase, we can postpone, yeah? So afterwards, uh, then uh, they're trying to recover through the uh, loan. Okay, so that is uh, for bank. Okay, what else? What about facilities and infrastructure programs? Is that the right time for us, for the company to continue for, with this program during uh, a recovering stage? Professor, what do you mean by recovery stage? Sorry again. What do you mean by recovery stage? Um, recovering from economy. From pandemics to endemics. Okay. Because during uh, COVID-19 era, um, uh, most, uh, most of the companies, um, they are very struggle um, to get a profit uh, and then uh, they have to sustain um, their their company, sustain in the market. So that is very challenging for the economy, lah, for the company as well. Can we use the third program about, uh, for example, like the company Boeing and, uh, and uh, Toyota, where they gather parts from more than one, uh, one company to reduce the payment they should pay if they were constructing it by their own? Mm, for adding okay. the increasing convenience and comfort at minimum cost. Okay, what they do this for Boeing? Appropriate? What they Boeing, do for Boeing? They, for, for many parts of the plane, they, uh, they for example, get the, the wing from another country, uh, the engine from another country. 
many parts from different countries and they arrive at the at their company and they collect it to manufacture it. Uh, that one during pandemics or that is the original approach by Boeing? The, or, the original approach. Oh no, now, now I'm talking about uh, recovering stage uh, from pandemics to endemics. They can reduce the facilities that they are taking from the part, for example, instead of going from another country, they can make it local. Mm. Mm. To reduce the cost. Okay, so that is Boeing, uh, Boeing action right now? Yes, for example, uh, the, the USA will manufacture a new, uh, they will start producing, um, I mean, they will start building a new uh, ship for uh, ship manufacturing so they mm -hmm. can re reduce the cost of the ship making in their country. Oh. Okay. Um, Instead of, that, uh, taking the uh, part I, I believe, from China. Okay, I believe that is the uh, the approach by the Boeing company. Okay, the original approach where that is the strategy of the uh, company. Yeah. Okay, so now what I'm talking is about the facilities infrastructure uh, programs, uh, where for example we construct um, the roads, we improve the facilities. Is this program um, is beneficial uh, to run the program uh, the program during this phase during uh, from pandemic stage to endemic stage. That is my question originally. Okay, program number one and program number two, okay, that is clear. Meaning right now they can continue for the uh, recovering stage uh, from uh, economy. But my question just now is, what about facilities and infrastructure programs? Uh, since it's not profit oriented, so it's not important at the moment. Nine. Uh, in my opinion, I think it's still uh, important because uh, inf uh, infrastructure uh, like roads and bridges, they there's uh, like people travel through them every day, so mm -hmm. I think it's always important. Nonetheless, like uh, it doesn't matter if it's recovering or not. I think it's always important because of the convenience. Okay, so because during pandemic they stop they stop for facilities and infrastructure programs. Okay, but then now it's recovering stage from the economy. So, uh, most of the company right now they are going to improve their facilities and infrastructure programs. Because why? If let's say the uh, customer or the clients is not um, feel convenience or not comfort, they are not using the the infrastructure. Okay, they are not believe um, because uh, this is to. Uh, to make the the current uh, the previous process, uh, meaning during the pandemic, uh, everything almost everything is stopped. So now it's recovering stage. So we are going to live as normal and uh, try to make, you know, uh, more comfortable to the uh, clients. Okay. So right now, uh, most of the companies have run these three uh, types of programs. Um, so that um, from time to time, uh, when the economy is become stable, so they can get uh, they can get more more profit and more comfortable to live in okay so this is the decision okay decision so uh, for the, the decision we also have three types of decisions first is expansion production capacity exploring new market for product or service okay so right now uh, most of the company also try to uh, expand their capacity and then um, this is especially for big company lah. for small company normally they bungkus already okay they cannot survive during the pandemics okay 
So for big company, their um, uh, expand their capacity and then they are uh, trying to uh, explore new market for product or services and then replacement, replacing existing method with the optimum and least costly method, equipment, process or location. Okay. Uh, because for example, in UTM, uh, since I think almost two years, uh, we didn't work in our office. So a lot of machinery have to replace. Okay? Uh, we have to recover and uh, do the maintenance lah for the equipment. Because uh, for equipment, if let's say um, apa, we don't use it, so the equipment is um, the tear, tear and wear to is become faster. Okay, uh, closure. So usually the last resort, more towards investment decisions such as closing down factory, termination of projects and others. So some of the company also, um, they conduct the engineering economy uh, to close down the factory. Okay, what is the example of company that they are closing down during the pandemics? If you still remember. Lah. If not closing down the factory, but they closed the branch, few branches. Giant. Giant. And then they replace with apa, TRF, kan? Okay, what else? Tesco. Tesco. Tesco masih ada lagi. Ada yang dah close ke? One big company in the world. Krispy Kreme. Krispy Kreme. Uh, yes, Krispy and the and, and, yes. They close the the uh, the factory. Not the factory, their branches. Oh, the branches. In the nineteen eighties, I think. In Malaysia. In 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 America, when they started, ah. there was over produ production, and the, and it cost them more than what they were selling. So they decided to close some factories mm. and uh, some 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 branches. I see. Because I I really like the Krispy Kreme. All right. Okay. Uh, what else? Toy R Us. What's that? Uh, Toy R Us. Toy R Us. Yeah, it's a, a toy based they, company. They close the uh, some of the branches. Yeah, especially in the United States, I think. Mm. Okay, what else? Do you heard Zara? Zara Clothes. Yes. Okay. Zara uh, has been closed down, I think. Let's check. Banyak juga lah. Dia tutup. Zara closing 1,200 retail stores worldwide. Okay. So this was uh, during pandemic where uh, 13 June 2020 so Zara has been closed 1,200 uh, stores, retail stores worldwide, and then they only maintain few. Um, okay. So the closures are expected to concentrate in Asia and Europe, while 107 Zara stores in United States will be less affected. Okay. So they have uh, only maintained 107. And then uh, the rest of the, uh, this one, the number of Zara branches will fall to about 6,700 to 6,900, including 450 new stores from the current 7,412 after restructuring. 
and then they come up with the uh, online online approach lah. Okay, so um, any um, branches that they are closing, but they're trying to cover with the uh, online online purchase. Okay, online service. So that is Zara. Okay, so before they uh, come up with the uh, decision, uh, so they conduct the engineering economy. <clears throat> right. So decision making process. Decision making process. Um, it will based on the cash flow, time and growth rate. Okay. So growth rate um is something like uh, time value of money concept. So we have a few principles here. <coughs> So for engineering economy principles, we need to generate alternatives. Okay, before we come up with uh, the final uh, final decision, so we have to come up with the uh, alternatives. Whether uh, then um, when we want to generate the alternatives, also um, is about the uh, proposal for improvement. Okay, so that's why as an industry engineer. You have to train your mind. Um, always think about improvement. How to improve something? When you see something, then you have to think. Okay, how to improve it? Okay, then uh, you can generate alternatives easily afterwards. And then second, consider differences only. Okay, first you come up with the alternatives, and then second you also can consider differences. When you do this, then what is the differences? What is the advantage that we can uh, we can get from there? And then principle three, use the same perspectives for each alternatives. And principle four, use the same unit of measurement. Principle five, consider all the relevant factors. Principle six, conduct sensitivity analysis. I believe most of the uh, students are familiar with the sensitivity analysis. And then principle seven, continuous monitoring and improvement of decision. So these are the uh, engineering economy principles before you come up with your final decision. So you have to test lah which one is more uh, suitable for the project. And then we evaluate the project. Then afterwards, um, you can uh, get which one, uh, which uh, decision is more reliable for the project to sustain the company. Okay, so that is chapter one. Okay, so this is the basic principles of engineering economy for decision making. So we go for chapter two. <coughs> So chapter two is about time value of money. So at the end of this chapter, students should be able to know the symbols, symbols used in engineering economy analysis, explain the meaning of equivalence in engineering economy, calculate growth rate and rate of return, apply simple, uh, simple interest and compounded interest, explain nominal and effective growth rate in engineering economy analysis. Okay, so in engineering economy, uh, we have to know about simple growth, compounded growth, nominal growth rate, effective growth rate, 
factors involved and time value of money. So these are the basic uh, terminologies that you have to remember. Okay. So unit time is the unit year that occur at each year end. When you're talking about unit time, so it is always a unit year that occur at each year end. So for example, in year one, year one meaning uh, we start in the um, January. So when they say, okay, one year, so meaning uh, January until December. Okay. So within one year. All right, basic symbols. P is present value or present worth at time zero. Okay, just remember first. Okay, P is present value at, or present worth at time zero. Time zero means we don't reach one year yet. Okay, starting point. Okay. So it is a single value occurring only once. F, a single value that occur in the future that is at any year end except time or year zero. So when we're talking about F, F cannot be start at time zero. Time zero means the present value. Okay, F means the single value that will occur in the future. So it can be year one, year two onwards. Okay, so for example, uh, you borrow money at present value, P. And then you have to pay uh, within 10 years. So F at 10. So that is the meaning. Lah. Okay. Then uh, the, the question is, okay, how much money that you have to uh, pay every year? Uh, so normally that is the kind of situation that you have to think. Okay. So F means the single value in the future. <clears throat> Ataupun, okay, you borrow some money. And then you invest that money for 20 years. Then you can expect, okay, how many F? After 20 years, how many that you will get? We assume that, okay, for example, you invest money in, um, apa? in ASB. But ASB is not single factor. It is not single value. ASB is compounded growth. Uh, tu yang tadi yang we have compounded growth. So you can you can calculate how much that you will get after 20 years you invest some money in ASB. So that single value tu the the money that you will get after 20 years okay that is F. Okay so far can follow Understand or not? No response? Okay, Walter. Okay. Kenapa macam diam je? <coughs> okay. Uh, next is A. A uniform annual value that occur in series for more than one year. Okay, starting at the end of year one. So, for example, <clears throat> uh, this is similar with the um, ASB. Lah. ASB, because every year you will get your dividend. So, you can calculate how much dividend that you will get. Okay, so only that is uh, the... Um, uh, annual value, Un but this one A is for uniform value. Okay, G. <coughs> G is a set of values that increase uniformly, gradient series, that starts at year one with the value uh, zero. <coughs> okay, 
So G it can be compounded in in a uh, compounded uh, growth. So on top of A, you have the G on top of it. Okay. So E E is a set of values that increase geometrically or exponentially in a series of years. So this series starts with the initial value D and then increases uh, by a specific percentage of the previous value. And I, because it's exponential, so A, G, E is the values that um, have a pattern. Okay, A is uniform, every year is fixed. G is the gradient, uh, they will increase year by yearly, but they will start at uh, value zero. Okay, uh, E is exponentially increase. Okay, so I is a, a growth rate that occur for each year and it is in the form of percentage. So I meaning, for example, ASB, ASB, a government announced, okay, this year the dividend is 5%. So 5% is I, growth rate. Okay. Or fixed deposit, uh, maybe for uh, non-Malay, uh, non uh, you invest your money in fixed deposit. So fixed deposit, how much for the I? The average of I? You don't know? Come on, we have 45 students. Fixed deposit, how much per year? Or how much per six months? Average? 1.5%. Oh, they want too small. Fixed deposit right now average three uh, two point five until four um, until four. Normally previously is four, lah, but right now it's become uh, uh become a, a bit uh, uh, smaller. So about two point five percent until four percent. Okay. ASB pun uh, previously up to fifteen percent, ten percent. And then uh, they have eight uh, percent, seven percent, but nowadays, uh, last year is only four point five percent to five percent. Okay, so the growth rate is become smaller and smaller. Uh, but you can invest in in apa tu? in uh, stock market. Okay, if if you are really really brave and. Uh, you know the technical how to how to evaluate uh, the potential of the company so you can invest so for stock market within if let's say you are clever enough then you can get uh, profit within um, normally three three weeks to um, three weeks to six weeks you can get up to 10 percent or 20 percent but it depends on your analytical um, analysis. Lah. Okay. Technical analysis. We call it as technical analysis. So we have fundamental analysis. We also have technical analysis. Okay. All right. And then N. N it is pre period of the analysis usually in unit year. Okay. So if let's say 20 years. So N is 20 lah. Uh, is for five years, so n is five. So this is the example. So Ali plan to borrow thirty thousand and will pay back this loan in a single payment at the end of the third year. Okay, so third year is n three years. So Ali plan to borrow thirty thousand. So the current one is the current value. P, present worth, is 30,000. Okay. And then how much will he have to pay at 12% growth rate? So, I is 12%. Determine the symbols used in engineering economy in this case. So, they borrow 30,000. 
right now they got 30,000 and then he want to pay back the loan in a single payment at the end of the third year. So meaning first year, second year, third, uh, first year and second year, he don't uh, pay anything. He just want to pay at a single payment at the end of the third year. So that is how you um, uh, put the, the terminology, the symbol. P30,000, I 12%, and uh, three years. So the question is F, how much F that Ali have to pay? Okay. Okay. So example 2.2, referring to example 2.1, how much will the cumulative value of the loan if gross rate is 12%, and the payment will be made every year for three years. Determine the symbols used in Egyptian economy in this case. Okay. So if this case, what we have for the 2.1, Ali will want to pay for single value. So single value is F. But for the second question, they ask about how much will the cumulative value of the loan. Okay. How much uh, will the cumulative value of the loan if gross rate is 12% and the payment will be made every year for three years. So when we are talking about every year means A. Okay. A is the... Um, Uniform year. You uniform annual value. Okay. So the meaning of question 2.2 borrow 30%, growth rate or interest rate is 12%. So the duration is three years, and then how much for first year, second year, and third year? Uh, Ali have to pay. So that is the meaning of this question. Okay, so far, understand? You have to really understand about this principle first before we go for the, um, the symbols and uh, the cash flow. Okay. Professor, I have a question. Yes. The total increase in three years is 12% or only 12% for the first year and the second year and the third year? Okay, when we are talking about growth rate, okay, we go for I. I is growth rate that occur for each year. Okay, each year, I 12%. Okay. Okay. Remy? Okay. Right. Okay. That's why you have to really understand the basic terminologies. Don't confuse about it. <coughs> okay. Principal and gross. The initial or basic value of an investment um, or loan, okay, that is principal. So principal means pokok. In Malay, we call it pokok. Okay. Uh, for example, okay, uh, you borrow uh, 30,000 just now. So 30,000 is the principal. The basic value that how much that you, uh, you borrow. Okay. Gross represents time value of money of the principal. Okay, so gross means uh, future value minus initial value. Okay, normally we, uh, I ask the student okay, to install easy calculators. 
Uh, can you find in your handphone, find the apps about easy calculators, EZ calculators. Can you find it? Is that calculator? So the um, apa namanya the symbols of is that calculators is the calculator and then besides it, uh, they have coins, gold coins. Okay, you can install that. And then uh, you can play around with the uh, easy calculators. And this is not only useful for this course, but it's also useful for your future as well. How you can manage your own money, how much that you want to borrow, how much that you want to invest, how much that you will get. So you can play around with that calculator. Okay, if let's say you want to uh, make a loan for car loan, or you want to uh, calculate about the stock markets, that also you can use that easy calculators. Okay. Later, uh, I will share. All right. <clears throat> so growth rate, growth rate is um, the growth rate percent, uh, percentage of growth rate. So growth in a unit time, okay, unit time just now, what, uh, what does it mean with the unit time? If you still remember, unit time will be calculated at the end of the year, yeah? okay? So growth in a unit time divide by initial value, okay? So for example, Ahmad made a bank loan of 20,000 and is required to pay back 21,000 one year from now. Okay. They make a loan, borrow 20,000, and then have to pay back another 21,000. So extra 1,000. So what is the gross value and gross rate of this loan? So gross is 21,000 minus 20,000. So the gross is 1,000. So gross rate is 1,000 divided by the principal. So it's 20,000 multiplied with 100%. So the gross rate is 5% per year. So I is 5%. Okay. Similar with, if let's say you borrow, uh, you make a PTPTN. Uh, Who use the PTPTN um, apa? service? <coughs> Anyone get the PTPTN? PTPTN loan to continue for your for your study? No. Huh? Ada tak? Kenapa you all passive? Ada yang tak pernah datang? Oh tak, okay. okay sekejap eh. I check the name first. I think... Almost all students uh, borrow from PTPTN. And then how much that uh, you have to pay at the end of your study. So you know how, um, because normally PTPTN says, okay, 4% four, four kan, the interest rate. But if let's say uh, you graduated uh, with um, flying colors, so they will give you um, the apa, the discount. So you can calculate how much that you can save. 
So that is one of the motivation uh, how to increase your your CGPA and CPE. <coughs> okay, equivalent. Equivalent, uh, a value that is equal to another due to time value of money. So where Ali deposit 1,000 in the bank now at the rate of 5% of a year. So a year later, his savings become 1,050. Okay. Thus, a growth of 50 ringgit occurred over the one year period. So this shows that the value of 1,000 now is Equivalent to 1050 one year from now at growth rate of 5%. So why this equivalent is very important? Because it's due to uh, time value of money. Okay. You can think about uh, when you uh, childhood, okay, how much money that you uh, get from your mom for school? Three ringgit. Three ringgit. Two ringgit. The, okay, three ringgit. So that three ringgit, when you compare after 20 years, when you give three ringgit to your uh, to your little brother or little sister, so they will get the same value three ringgit after 20 years compared to now. No, doctor. Okay. Uh, the money value uh, decline. Decline. So that is the time value of money. Similar with the salary. Uh, when I work, my first work, uh, I work in the industry uh, in 2000. Okay. So in year 2000, my salary is 1,800. That was in Shimano, Shimano Pekananas. Okay, right now, after you graduate, how much average salary as an engineer that you will get? Average? Four to five, three. Uh, that, is <laughs> 4, 000, that is in your dream. Four thousand, that is in your dream. Two thousand? Depend on the company, uh, the company do 1,800 for engineer. Some of the company still pay with 1,800. But some yes. company is a good company, multinational company, you can get 2,500, you can get 2,800. And some company also will pay you about 3,500 and above. But 4,000, uh, not yet lah. Okay, 3,500, if you're a very excellent student, you're very performed during the uh, your study because uh, they also will see your CGPA. Your communication skill, okay? So that will bring you to another value. That's why I am trying to train all the students to be not very passive because if you're passive, then... It's difficult for you to perform during um, during the interview. For final year student, I ask the students to talk a lot. Okay? So that's why I'm quite surprised because you are final year students. But when I ask students, uh, when I ask, um, you are third year, eh? Third year or final year? Third year, rather. Uh, still third year. Have you gone through the industrial training? Not yet. Oh, not yet. Okay. It's okay. Still have time. Still have time for you to grow and uh, train yourself to be more, uh, not we can say extrovert, but uh, you have to portray yourself and talk a lot. Okay. Talk a lot means uh, not talk without points, but talk a lot means uh, you you are able to portray your idea. So that is very important to be a good engineer in the future. Okay? Sorry, saying up final year. Tak apa, third year, you have to train yourself as well. Okay? Because I normally um, uh, teach final year student. <coughs> okay, so this is about the 
uh, time value of money. Lah. So you can imagine if let's say you are very passive and then uh, after you graduate and then you will get 1,800. Similar with my, with my salary for the past 20 years. For the past 22 years, 1,800. So with 1,800, it's difficult to sustain lah right now. Okay, with the current current um, current living current living style. Oops. Okay. So simple and compound growth. Simple growth is calculated based only on the principal value. So this is simple uh, simple growth. Where we have, okay, uh, how to calculate the growth of simple growth. We have the principle, how much that you, you earn or how much that you borrow. Multiply with unit time, how many uh, N or how many years. And then multiply with growth rate. So this is very simple, very straightforward. Okay, so for example, a company provides loan facility for workers with a payback scheme based on simple growth. So determine the amount owed by the um, worker if he borrowed 2,000 for five years at the end of growth rate of 10% per year. Okay, so this one is very straightforward. Where growth each year, 2,000 multiplied with I, 10%. So growth each year is 200. So total growth for five years, 200 multiplied with five. So total growth is 1,000. Therefore, the accumulated amount he owes in five years is 3,000. Okay. So this one simple, it's very simple. Lah. Straightforward. Okay. Okay, for simple growth, normally uh, is for fixed, fixed I. Because when you make a loan, uh, we have um, apa, Islamic approach dengan conventional, kan? So for Islamic approach, normally is uh, fixed rate. So fixed rate, normally we calculate based on simple growth. Okay. Uh, for conventional, is uh, sometimes it's fluctuate. Uh, so that one is another calculation. Lah. It's not compounded uh, growth. But for com compounded growth, uh, the example is um, like ASB. ASB is compounded growth. Okay, how long you put um, is the how long you will you will get uh, the the uh, the more that you will get. Okay, that's why I ask you to calculate uh, to install the easy calculator. So in easy calculator, kita tahu dia tengok kat sini. Hmm. For easy calculator, they have loan calculator, they have compound interest. So under compound in interest, they have principal amount, monthly deposit, period or month. Okay, in this case is here lah. And annual interest rate, the I. So compounding is whether is uh, monthly, quarterly, yearly. Okay, so you can see from there. Uh, semi-annually or no compound. So you can play uh, play around with the calculator. Right. <clears throat> okay. So this is compound growth where growth for each period is based on the principal value and the total growth from previous years. So you have the principal plus total growth multiply with growth rate. So you will get the closer. So the example is the client borrowed 2000 from a bank with a compounded growth rate of 10 year, 10 percent a year. So determine the total amount that he owes over the five years period. Okay, ini another another example is along. Along tau kan? Along. Do you know what is along? Tahu dah. Tahu dah ke? Uh, what about Remy? Remy, you are you are international student. Loan shark, yes. Loan shark. 
Remy Ahmad, you are international student. How many international student we have in this class? Yes, doctor. You are from? Yes, doctor. Libya, Libya. Uh, Yemen. Uh, Egypt. Oh, Egypt. Uh, another one is. Me, doctor. Ah, Haizam. Okay. So you are from Yemen. Uh, yes, from Yemen. Okay. So along uh, in Malay uh, we call along, but um, uh, along means loan shark. Okay. All right. <clears throat> so for loan shark also, um, they calculate their profit based on compounded, uh, compounded interest, compounded growth. That's why they become uh, rich easily. Okay. So for growth rate, uh, compound uh, growth, just now, okay, borrow 2000, okay. So growth for year one, 2000, because they borrow 2000, multiply with 10% is 200. And then total accumulated debt at year end, uh, year end of uh, year end one is 2000 plus 200. So it become 2200. And then second year, okay, you have 2,200. And then multiply with the growth rate, so you will get 220. So you uh, accumulate. At the end of year two, you will get 2,420. Uh, okay. Then you accumulate again for third year. So at the end of the uh, year two, will become the principal for year one, uh, year three. Okay. So year three, in the beginning of year three, you will get a uh, two four twenty, multiply with the growth rate ten percent. So um, the growth is two hundred forty two. So at the end of year three, you will get the principal is two hundred uh, two thousand four hundred twenty plus two four two. So at the end of year three, you will get two six six two, and then two six six two uh, go into year four. Multiply with the 10%, you will get 266.2. And then uh, the accumulated debt at the end of year four is 2928.2. And then finally, for the growth rate of year five, uh, you will get 292.82 for year five. Then the accumulated all debt at the end of year five is 3221.02. So the conclusion is with the compounded growth, the debt become 3,221.02 in five years. But for the simple growth is only 3,000. Okay. So this is only for 2,000 if you borrow 2,000. You imagine if let's say you borrow 200,000. So 200,000 means uh, lagi banyak lah. Okay. So you can see the difference between simple and compound growth. For loan, never, never go for the compounded growth. But for the investment, we are always looking for the compounded growth investment. Okay. So the method of calculating growth rate has an impact on the value accumulated at the end of each year. Okay, so now we go for the cash flow. Kita pergi sikit. This is the graphical representation of cash flow on the time scale. So when we're talking about P just now, P, P is the current value of present worth at year zero. Okay, time zero ni. And then we have uh, A, how to draw the A. A is uniform, man. So every year is uniform. Okay. And for future is single value at any year except for zero. So F ni cannot be at, at year zero. F can be at year one, two, three onwards. So that is F single value. Okay. P also single value. Okay. 
So now you have plus and minus. So if let's say you borrow the money. So you borrow the money meaning minus or plus. Plus. Why plus? Because we have more money. Uh, you get the money. So if you receive the money, it meaning plus. If you um, apa, uh, invest or you withdraw your money, is minus. So you have to imagine your pocket. Okay. When you borrow, the money get in in your pocket. So that is plus. Okay. So these are the example. Lah. <clears throat> So the example, okay, for P, if let's say uh, you draw the money for 500 and then um, or you invest 500, okay, and then uh, you, how much that you will get every year? So you invest 500, so every year with, um, with the growth rate is 12%. Uh, so how much that you will get for each year until uh, five years? Okay, similar with this. Sometimes they ask you, okay, uh, if let's say every year uh, you you want to get five one hundred fifty, so your uh, growth rate is twelve percent. How much that you have to invest? Something like that, Okay, or in this case. If you pay or if you invest 500, how much that you will get at the end of uh, five years? Okay. For A, how much that you will get every year? But for C, at the end of five years, after you invest 500 and then you, you just close the book, you don't want to see. You just wait until at the end of five years. So how much that you will get? Okay. And then D, if you want to get at the end of five years is 700 with the I growth, the growth rate is 12%, then how much that you have to invest? Okay, so this is the cash flow. How do you uh, draw the cash flow? Okay, what about this? How much that you want to invest and then uh, this one uh, is compounded interest okay is gradient so i is 12 percent so as i mentioned before for gradient they will start at zero so at year one normally is zero okay so this one zero and then second year then you will get the extra money lah. So this one, how much gradient every year you will get? Okay. So this is the example. A man borrow 5,000 now at the growth rate of 12% per year. So when you borrow, it's positive because you get money. Okay. So how much must he pay at year 5? Construct the cash flow diagram for this problem. So you get 5,000 because you borrow money. So the money came into your pocket. Okay. So your growth rate is 12%. And then how much that you have the men have to pay at the end of year five. Year five. So that is F. Okay. Understand? Yes. Okay. This one. Azman invest. So once they invest, meaning negative. Invest means you have to withdraw your money to invest to other, other bank or other counter. So you have to withdraw. So invest 2,000, negative. Okay. So every year they invest for six years. Every year. Ni. Every year means, okay, year one, Withdraw 2,000. Year 2, another 2,000. Year 3, another 2,000. Until year 6. 
he wants to know the amount of return in his investment accumulated after six years if growth rate is 10% a year. Okay, so every year and then at the end, okay, at um, uh, year six, how much the return of his investment if I is 10%. So have to accumulate uh, to calculate, okay, how much at the end of six years after you invest every year, 2000, uh, six years with 10,000, how much? So that is the cash flow, how to do it. Why uh, the F is positive? Because return of investment, you get the money. Okay. All right. So I think uh, we stop at, at, at here first. Okay. So I will let uh, Dr. Roslina to continue. Okay. Uh, at this moment, any problem or any question? No, doctor. No, doctor. Clear, eh? Clear, doctor. All right. Okay, so with that, uh, I think uh, we can stop our class. So make sure um, you fill up the form uh, for attendance. Saya dah bagi tadi kan? I posted again. All clear. Okay, thank you. So I posted again the uh, Google form. Uh, why you use the Google form? Because in my e-learning, they already removed the subject. Uh, so that's why I cannot uh, give you the uh, barcode lah for attendance. Okay. So with that, I hope that um, you, are, uh, you can learn uh, whoever will teach you. Okay, Dr. Ruzina is very, very good teacher. Uh, so you can learn this and then make sure this course uh, is not only for this course, but this course is actually is very important for you when you uh, after you graduate. This this elmo this knowledge is very very useful. I frankly speaking, okay, because when you graduate, uh, you will inv invest money. You have to manage your own money. You also can learn about the stock market. Because right now, um, youngsters already involved in stock market and investment. So this knowledge, I frankly uh, tell you, you have to very focus on this. Okay? Because after you graduate, no one will teach you. Okay? You have to learn and then attend the courses. Because to attend the courses about the uh, financial management, about the engineering economy and accounting is very, very expensive. All right. So with that, uh, I hope um, enjoy your day. Okay. Assalamualaikum and have a nice day. Thank you, Dr. Thank you, Dr. Thank you, Dr.